All right. Hello. Are we Are we coming together? All right, guys and gals and children and everybody else. Actually, it's probably mostly children here today, right? Um, I was going to do a little exercise to get you on your feet. How about everyone stands up? Come on, come on. Now, Lewis is going to lead us in a little bit of clapping. So, it'll be... Okay, okay, you remember... Come on. One, two, three. Yeah, Come on. And then sing. We will, we will rock you. We will, we will rock you. All right, we're awake. The blood is flowing through our veins and through those gray matter cells in our brains. And, and Dan is going, I knew that crazy Irishman was going to do something because he has to let the genie out of the bottle. Okay, so pregame. You want a free T-shirt? You want a free pair of socks? Please fill in the server here. It's very easy. There's a little tiny URL. Even I could probably type that one in without a mistake. Um... I'm going to ask you all, if you're interested, take the little survey. If there are packages that you think are missing, etc., cetera, uh, please let us know what you think should be on Risk 5 that's not on Risk 5 today. All right, we've got a Spartatic down here that says everything. I know for a fact that there's a lot of stuff already on Risk 5. So what I want is the delta, the gap analysis. You are my gap analysis team. All right. So. There are challenges with new silicon platforms. And there's a lot of gray hairs in the room, and some of us have lived through the dream of having the best silicon on the planet. Uh, I think, Dan, you were in digital, weren't you? So we had True64 Unix, best Unix on the planet, and it was sitting on Alpha, best CPU architecture at the time. But that meant diddly squat, because guess what? Our application portfolio was this size, Sun Solaris's application portfolio was that size. So where do you think the customers went? And so there's a certain arrogance around building a platform and expecting people to come because it's the biggest, the bestest, the greatestest. There's an invention of a word there every second. Um, and the problem is you really have to think about, hey, for a new platform, how do we get the ISV stack that sits way up in the upper atmosphere enabled to get from A to B. Historic migrations, they cost probably trillions of dollars, believe it or not. But um, we don't have trillions of dollars to do this, and we don't need to because we're living in the world of open source. Yay! I heard a yay there. Woohoo! All right. So what do, a customer, what do customers want? Well, actually, customers just want something very simple, something that's going to solve a problem for them. And they need a support to solution. However, that support to solution needs to be a combination of hardware that's supported, OS or OSs that are supported, and then applications that are actually certified and supported on top of that. And there's a lot of pre-GA testing goes into all of this across these different layers. There's a lot of integration testing goes on, and there's a lot of certification testing goes on to ensure that, what's his name, up at the top of the list, the customer, yeah, the, the, those people actually buy the products and you know, cause the ripple effect of the money chain that actually pays our salaries, uh, we should probably listen to them. They need supported solutions. Not an easy task. All right. So, Ecosystem relationship and complexities. Most customers, well, first of all, they don't care that it's a really complex environment. However, we do, right? 
So from a Fedora perspective, an Alma Linux perspective, a RHEL perspective, a Rocky Linux perspective, I will say Ubuntu perspective, anybody that I missed there, apologies. Um, really, the work starts with, and we'll see if this, I actually bought a laser, but I didn't bring it to the podium. All right, let's see. No, that thing doesn't work. All right, so you look at the different layers here on the slide the hardware, the OS, and the certified applications that sit on top. To get to that scenario, when you get a new silicon vendor, silicon vendors have to work upstream in the Linux kernel to get their silicon enabled upstream. In turn, those silicon vendors need to work with server vendors. They may indeed be the server vendors at the same time, who in turn need to work with all the major operating system vendors to ensure that their product, their silicon, is enabled, lights up, does what it's supposed to do. The same goes for the adaptive vendors. And the ISVs then, at the end of the day, once, like me, it's a little known fact, within Red Hat, there's a team that I used to manage, and I'm very proud of that. They're called Engineering Partner Management, and they're like the central exchange for connecting with all the partners on the silicon side, the hardware sides, the servers, CPUs, um, IO adapters, NVIDIA, uh, you name it. They do the technical interface between the vendors and the partners and internal engineering within Red Hat. If they didn't, uh, there would be a huge vacuum because just because you got the best silicon on the planet, if the code isn't upstream to enable it, you're going nowhere really fast. Just because you got a server that has everything it needs upstream, you're still going nowhere fast. And guess what? When it comes to shipping a product, you got to work as a silicon vendor. You're going to have to work with the server vendors, the OS, if I can say. Uh, and he leads uh, an open distribution forum. So any distribution on the planet, including those that are not members of RISE, can actually come to the table and converse every two weeks with the goal of enabling RISC-V across all the Linux distributions. And then we've got a developer board program. I got a, uh, one or two slides on that. And the slides will be available after the presentation when um, they post these on the Fedora site. Um, so our board program is a program where we have multiple boards from different partners that we then seed out to various other um, entities, such as yourselves. Uh, for you to do something meaningful and useful, such as the Rocky folks that have actually gotten a uh, product recently, and to, to bring it up and, and have it running sufficiently and effectively. I will also state that a shout out to somebody that's not here, uh, Wei Fu and, and Gary Case, uh, and Peter Marticelli's team, for all the hard work that they've been doing in enabling RISC-V over the last, I mean, these folks have been working on RISC-V for, I don't know, five plus years, and that's not like, no NDA is broken because all you have to do is look at the upstream submittals and, and, and track them and you can see, hey, you know, the, the Fedora has been very active in the RISC-V arena. So kudos to uh, Fedora. Thank you very much. Um, if you're interested in the boards program, there is a link. This is a hot link. You can join the boards program, submit that you, uh, you know, I want a board. I want to do something meaningful, useful, and I'll provide you feedback. Um, and then with regard to the bulk of the tool chain, I mean, all the GNU stuff, KVM, uh, LLVM, Rust, etc., Go, they're all enabled, they're all supported. Now, with regard to, is something optimized? Optimizations are continuous. So there will be continuous optimizations across the tool chain over time, just like it is on x86, just like it is on ARM. Um, and then down the bottom here, we just have, you know, shout out to all the distributions that are really actively involved in bringing up RISC-V because it is no easy endeavor. So, we have a thing called the RISC-V Software Development Dashboard. Um, so, I'm proud that I actually put this thing together. Uh, felt like I was hitting my head off a wall at times because I'm not a spreadsheet person. Um, but this is where we're tracking the enablement of various, um, we'll say, packages, products, OSs, 
uh, and applications. And over time, this is going to evolve into more of a, a software catalog on RISC-V. But right now, it's kind of in its infancy. But it, it is going to grow. But it'll grow with your help, right? Not me. It's you. We need you folks to assist. So that's why I got this little thing here, a little game time, right? Here's the link. We've got um, some goodies to give away. If you fill in the form, I'm going to monitor the, 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 the spreadsheet that is fed out of the, the Google form. And um, I'm happy to give out everything I have. And if I have too little, I'm, pro I'm happy to get some more. So just as a backup, so this is my original thing where these are the vendors that actually have given us boards so far in the boards program, because I think it's useful to know. And also we have, these are, these are boards that we already have out there. And the latest ones, and these boards within the program, it's closed. Um, and I have to love all my children equally, so I can't say, hey, buy this one, buy that one. It's like, no, that's not really r correct of me to do so. However, with regard to the boards program itself, there are, everything is closed with regard to trying to get one of those boards, except these bottom two. So the Vision 5 and the Lychee Pi 4A, we're still taking applications for people that are interested in, in uh, assisting in testing and debugging uh, on RISC-V. And I, I've already picked up one or two connections while I've been here, which is kind of cool, because the more the merrier, because it is open source. And it behooves me, because my board of directors person that I identify to, um, it behooves me to mention that this is an open standard. So RISC-V is an open standard, which is like founded on the principles of open source. And this is the first time we've got an ISA. So the Bible of how a CPU should uh, run, obey, how it should do subtraction, multiplication, etc. cetera. Um, it's all open. And it's open to you folks to help. You can join the foundation, and you can determine, hey, I'd like this widget. I'd like this other widget. And if the consensus is this widget is the next best thing since sliced bread, it'll be baked into the standard, which is really cool. And it's international. So um, the interesting part of this is uh, RISC-V is uh, making huge inroads globally, not just uh, US-centric or European-centric, but globally. Latin America, India, and of course China are prominent in their uh, investments into RISC-V. Um, so any questions from anyone in the audience, except Jeff Rock, because he should know the answers to the questions he's going to ask. Wow. Oh, we got a hand, we got a hand. Hands across America. It's not working, so I gotta switch. It's a silent question. Hello? We, okay, there okay. I am. All right. Is there a way to, like, is there a Fedora spin that has RISC-V or something that folks can play with? Is oh, that yeah. even something you that... want to play with uh, Farty? And, and, and it, okay. it's there. And as I say, like, I don't know if you're a Red Hat or a Fedora or whatever, but uh, Weifu has got the, the keys for, hey, it's available through a handshake. And uh, they're working on making it available more um, publicly, right? Do you want to comment on that one? Yeah, I think it's it's so the the availability is literally moving daily. I know the work the work is done to get things running for, on Fedora, and I think they were uh, just recently found space uh, on FedoraProject.org somewhere on the download site where you can um, actually get your hands on the artifacts and you know, actually play around with a spin. Uh, I don't know the URL off the top of my head, but I do know that there are people here who will know uh, if you find Kevin Fenzi or, um, oh, and, and I'm sorry, I don't know your, Neil, awesome, yeah, so there's some folks here who know where to find it and can hook you up.
So Paul, I don't know if to sh I should shout, dance, or just go up and hug you and give you a kiss. So thank you very much. It's, you know, you don't even have to buy me a drink, Isaac, because, you know. Wow, you get a free t-shirt. <laughs> All right. So, um, so the last non exit is, this is probably, this is probably a question, not for Fedora, but the, the Risk Five um, upstream community. But I don't follow Risk Five with a magnifying glass, so I'm curious what the state of things are. So, the last non x86 board to gain popularity in the last few decades is ARM, and um, as we all know, in ARM there's serious um, fragmentation issues about. SOC manufacturer A wants to boot this way, and B wants to boot this way, and C wants to boot this way, and some companies really want to upstream, some some companies don't want to at all, some kind companies kind of want to upstream half of it. Um, some people want ACPI, some people want device trees, and, and the list goes on and on. It, it, what is the state of the Risk Five community and are there efforts um, being put in to uh, prevent this fragmentation issue, like we see in ARM, going forward? So, one, the beauty of Risk Five is it's an extendable architecture. So you can have a very small SOC, very small cores uh, for embedded devices. And hey, Fedora and Red Hat probably don't worry about sensors and things like that, or maybe they do these days. They didn't when I was there. Uh, and what's going to happen is, especially from an OS perspective, right? All the OSs are saying there are multiple profiles available uh, within Risk V, but the OSs are saying, look, we just want to do one superset, and we'll certify that and focus on doing that. And anyone that's outside of that realm can do whatever they want to do, but if they want to run one of these the major OSs, they're going to have to stay within the parameters of that game. So that's on the OS front. On, on, on the fragmentation, yeah, on the one hand, they've got the choice to, to fragment, but on the other hand, we also are going to introduce the certification uh, within... Um, there's a whole committee set up to look at certification within Risk V itself, so that the partners all conform to the same standard specification. And it's not just, hey, I've built it off of this specification, it conforms and it's proven certifiable that it is in adherence to the standard. So that should help as well. Yeah, no, thanks for the answer. The ARM community, I guess, Again, everyone, everyone knows. That we tried to do this with System Ready, and System Ready had some success in the ARM servers world, but yeah. outs outside that, it's a bit, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing about standardizing things, which is kind of cool, is to quote John Masters, who's absent. Um, yeah, I'm thinking of him. <laughs> for obvious reasons. I think he's at the ARM conference in Cambridge right now. Yeah, um, yeah he, you know, the, he always said, we want to make ARM boring. And yeah, we want to make Risk Five boring, but also exciting. Exciting from the perspective that this thing is coming at us like a juggernaut, and we got to get ready for it. And that sounds a little pompous uh, coming from me if, if you're not aware of Risk Five, but uh, if you start analyzing the data, you realize that oh my God, this thing has got legs and wheels, and it's moving and starting to gain momentum. So um, it's. You know, the, the first, so th and this will tell you how much, on the other hand, we're in our infancy, the first laptop shipped about two or three weeks ago, uh, the Roma laptop, right? Which is Risk Five, which is cool. It's a, like a milestone, and uh, I don't know if it's a reasonable price as well for developers if they're interested in playing with it. But, you know, things are moving, and it, it's, it's, it's exciting because, yeah, when you start, all you have to do is look at the membership of Risk V International, the foundation itself, and you look at the premier members and the other members, and you're going like, holy cow, we got NVIDIA in there, we got Microsoft in there, we got like Intel, 
I mean, we, we got part, and, and apologies to any of the partners and members that I haven't mentioned because there's so many I couldn't, uh, but that's not uh, something that was happening in the ter in, at the same timeline within the arm enablement side of the equation. Um, so we haven't got any of the kind of market friction that they had. However, we have a big challenge, and this comes back to why I'm here. Um, the bulk of enterprise applications today are sitting on x86. What are we going to do about that? We created the solution, and it's not a, hey, build this and they shall come. We have to create, we created the problem, we have to create the solution for the ISVs to help the ISVs get their applications from x86 and PowerPC, if you're listening, um, and other architectures over onto RISC-V. So, and, and that is, like, that is a humongous lift, but, you know, you need, um, you need to have uh, emulators. We, no. we we need migration tools, yeah. tools that will look at intrinsics. For instance, x86 intrinsics, and say, hey, here's the equivalent intrinsic call on the um, the risk five side of the equation, and here's what you need to change. So and and you know there are several. If you look at what happens in ARM or what happens like even PowerPC, um, all the major architectures they had. To put in place migration tooling for specifically for the ISVs, for the application vendors to get their apps over. So that's going to be the biggest challenge. Plus all those apps are sitting on architecture that's going kind of the way the dodos eventually. And uh, some of the applications are really old as well. Anyway, I'll shut up. It's your question time. I hey, Matthew gets, get, Matthew gets dibs because you know, he's a big wig in Fedora, right? Does yeah, it, I'll just flip the other need for that, that one. So yeah, the, the somewhat related to the ARM fragmentation thing. One of the what, the problems in the ARM small device space for Fedora is that other than the Raspberry Pi, every ARM board basically appeals to ARM board enthusiasts or um, you know dev board enthusiasts. And um, if you, you want to actually do something with it, Raspberry Pi is the only game in town. And that is being you know, the price point and just that like I could go buy a Raspberry Pi 4 now or a 3, like those, I can get those kind of things. Um, whereas the other boards, like by the time we've got them enabled, they don't work. Are any of these vendors committing to like making the same thing for like five years? I think you're trying to ask a different question. Okay. <laughs> I think what you're really saying is where are the servers? No, no, and, this is no? not for servers. Well, okay. yeah, where are the servers is a whole other question. But no, this is like where's my home, you know, IoT box thing that I can play with, or I want to do a little project, uh, you know, forty dollars for a device, I can just grab that off the shelf, and it'll be the same as last time I did that. I'm not learning a whole new device. Yeah, for the enthusiasts, I mean. I can't speak on behalf of the, 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 the people that are making product on the timelines and their roadmaps, right? Because, well, yeah. firstly, I don't have access to it, right? And I'm sure if the market, you know, the, the market dictates everything, right? So if, if, if people start buying specific boards more than other boards, then those boards will start growing and lasting longer. Um, you know, Raspberry Pi wasn't, you know, like, Rome, Roma wasn't built in a day. Uh, yeah. Neither was Raspberry Pi. It takes time. And yes, it's a, great, it's a great tool for developers to play with. However, you know, when you're thinking of getting into the end game of getting into servers, it becomes a slightly different ballgame. Yeah, so I think Raspberry Pi succeeded because their target was educational market and they had a different goal than we're going to make some little dev boards that hopefully people will bite on, right? Like they had a thing they wanted to do that was long term. And so that, by a side effect, happened to be exactly what a lot of other people wanted and needed outside that education market. Um, I'm wondering if anybody you know, if you, it sounds like the answer is no, well, but, no, the, no, no, but is yeah. anybody like thinking of that ahead of that, like, oh, so we want to be I, that kind yeah, of Yeah, I'd like to see the stuff. people that do the Raspberry Pi boards um, doing RISC-V boards as well. Not, you know, in addition to the RISC-V vendors to have the people that are doing Raspberry Pi, the, the company in uh, Wales, I can't remember their name, uh, would be great if they started doing RISC-V as well. But you see, the, for the vendors, it's a cheaper game. They don't have to pay any licensing fees to ARM. And, and for instance, there's another, um, there's another foundation called the Open Hardware Foundation. You can actually get fully baked silicon 
designs that have gone back and forth to the fabs and debugged, you can take the designs and say, hey, this is a fully fledged design for a, a, tape out, a taped out chip, and send it to a, um, a fab and say, hey, I want a million units, and not pay anybody for the privilege of taking that design. No licensing fee to anyone. So that, you know, when you think about it that way and you're thinking about boards, you know, the board vendors are going to go like, hmm, I'm paying ARM, X, Y, Z. I don't have to pay over here. Uh, I'm, water seeks the path of least resistance. And the market dictates everything. But at the same time, again, we got to prepare. And I, I do like the idea. And we got to prepare the grounds and enable folks to get from A to B. I think we had a question over here as well. And uh, Jeff Rose on next. So, uh, who's on next? I was just trying to get an overview here on Risk Five because we we got the project and we would like to to test that in Fedora and in Risk Five. And I just learned recently that currently the Fedora Risk Five infrastructure is totally outside of the uh, every other architecture. So, is there any plans to have support for that too? Like, let's say I got a package, uh, I want to run a Koji build, and um, would I be able to to get also a, a Risk Five um, build or how do you plan to handle that currently? I apologize. I didn't quite catch no the worries. question because you're, you, you're speaking even quick for me. Okay, so maybe too many coffees. Let me get back to you. So I'm just trying to run, uh, I'm just trying to get a build of one project I'm working into, and I would like to see some Risk Five builds. Those are in Fedora, and in Fedora I get access to every other architecture. Yeah. So I know that Fedora Infra runs also support for Risk Five. But I learned that that's totally isolated from the other ones. So, is there any plan to have also Risk Five supported built in Koji? And if so, how would that work? And if it if it doesn't, how would they be able to test anything regarding packaging in Fedora and Risk Five so far? Okay, I think there's another deeper question, and it, oh, Jeffrey's going to answer it because it's. <laughs> So tag teaming. Uh, we'll be covering this in the talk in 12 seconds. Awesome. But, um, <laughs> as, as a preview, I can say that there is a there is a Koji server currently. There are actually two. There's an effort to combine them into one. That hardware has been purchased and is in the process of being integrated now. Thank you so much. Let's see if. Oh, and he was, talking, he was talking about the banana pie. Just in case you're wondering just what these boards cost, this is a, uh, a board with 16 gigs of memory, and it's $169. As, uh, there was a question also about boards that are, um, are, uh, have longevity. I think Matthew asked that. Uh, the Beagle board are making Risk v boards now. They have two different models. And they, have, they are also very focused on education, and they've committed to long-term builds. They're a bit more expensive than the Raspberry Pi, and worth it, but my 